Hello, plate enjoyers. Uh, today we're going to talk about keyboard plates and why is plates and how is plates and how do plates sound and how do plate feel and uh, what do small changes in the plate affect. So yeah, uh, this video is actually brought to us by a question by MK, who asked probably months ago, what about plate material in the patron chat? So here's your answer, apparently, many months later. So let's talk about, let's talk about why plates, first of all, okay? Plateless is a thing. This is a plateless build, you know? Switches go right in the PCB. You're good to go. Why do we even need plates? Well, I mean, you can probably see that these keys, especially up on the F row, we're not perfectly aligned, you know? Trying to, trying to get switches straight into a PCB, even if you do your best, sometimes it'll be kind of hard if, you know, if the switch doesn't firmly sit in the PCB. Uh, this is most notable for hot swap, where it will never firmly sit in the PCB, but also applies to soldered PCBs as well. And generally, a plate is going to hold a switch in a lot better than a PCB is going to hold the switch in. Right? Especially if you've got switches that are kind of loose and fall out. The second reason is because plates feel good and sound good and allow us to tweak the sound and the feel of a board by just switching up the plate material, which is very cool. So let's start with no plate as a plate, okay? And what I'm gonna do throughout this video is give comparative responses. So I'm going to always compare one thing to another thing to another thing, right? Instead of being like, ah, oh, yes, the plate is gonna resonate at you know, 320 hertz perfectly. No, okay, this, this is a video based on uh, experience. This is a video based on comparative analysis, not, you know, purely scientific analysis, okay? So, no plate. No plate is great. And if the primary feel of your keyboard is to get as much flex as you can out of it, naturally, a PCB alone is gonna flex a lot more than PCB in a plate right? Because you're adding rigidity. Logically, less material means less firm of a surface, right? And a, a plateless build can be very enjoyable to type on. One of my all-time favorite keyboards to type on is the Cherry G80, like a G80 1800. Pick one up for like $20, $30. $30. It's very flexy. G80 boards don't have plates. And even, you know, the sound signature, even in a full plastic case, is something that's very enjoyable. Downside of no plate, it means no plate is holding the switches in. So you have to be super careful with the whole size for the switch feet, right? Cherry spec is 0.7 millimeters. So like the, the hole that the pins, not the pins, the feet, the feet, the plastic feet go into need to be a good size. If they are too wide, and the switch is just gonna fall out, right? So a lot of a lot of PCBs will have holes that are smaller than that. So you really gotta shove them in there, which is good to some degree. Now, generally you wanna be careful with switches that have no feet, so plate mount switches, or switches with small feet, like JWKs. So these are JWKs. And although that although this build may seem all right, because I don't have all the caps on it, there's some crooked ones. And like I took my time. And there's still some crooked ones. What can you do? Uh, anyway, some kale, some batches of gat inks, uh, test keys, tech keys, pardon. So a lot of switches will have problems going straight into a PCB. If you're going to do a PCB mount build, your de facto switch should be MX Blacks or whatever MX switch because their feet are thicker than other switches and they will fit in any hole, okay? So moving from plateless, we go to the half plate, you know, the sign of a man who can't commit the half plate. So half plates are great for allowing two things. One, 
They allow your alphas to feel softer when bottoming out because there's no plate there, right? At the expense of a slightly higher pitch due to bottoming out directly on the FR4 PCB or CEM3 PCB. Now, when I say higher pitch, higher pitch than what, Simon? Than a standard aluminum plate. That is, that is our baseline. A standard aluminum plate is what all plates will henceforth be compared to, okay? So if you don't know what an aluminum plate sounds like, bro, go to a meetup and type on one. Uh, you should know what an aluminum plate feels like and sounds like because we're going to compare everything to it. The other advantage of a half plate is it keeps your modifiers feeling firm. And a lot of people enjoy this. Like some people do enjoy a flexi typing experience, right? But if you're playing games and you're holding down, you know, your, your left shift really hard and the PCB bends away from you, you feel like you're you feel like you're really struggling, like your, your, your keyboard is falling apart in your hands, which is why people have played. I mean, this is a terrible example of a half plate because this thing is wobbly, wobblier than my sanity, but you get the idea. So the mods will sound and feel like the original plate material and the alphas will feel almost like plateless, right? But not exactly so, because obviously a plate itself is going to introduce some firmness into the bounce or the flex. Right. So let's move on to the de facto plate, which is the aluminum plate. Okay. Aluminum is always the standard for keyboards, whether it be the case or the plate or whatever. And I know some of you might disagree, but like aluminum is the standard. Okay. So the nice thing about aluminum is it does have some flex to it, but not much. Okay. Now when I'm talking about flex, right here, we have a aluminum plate. Now, if we're looking at it side on, flex means the center of the plate will go down, right? As the edges come up, you see that? Like that, basically, like that, like that, right? So as you press down the center, so your, <clears throat> your mid layer of alphas will flex down further than your bottom row and your top row. That is flex. Bounce is when you press it and the entire plate goes up and down, okay? So aluminum has some flex to it, but not much. So typically keyboard plates will use five series aluminum. So 5,000 series, like 5032 or something like that. The important thing is just to know the series. Five series is more flexible than six or seven series. So like, you know, it flexes. Obviously a keyboard is not gonna flex in this direction. It's gonna flex in this direction, but it's harder to, you know, show you. So six series will be a little bit stiffer than five series and seven series will be stiffer than five series. But our de facto plate is a 5,000 series aluminum plate, right? Compared to this, a six series or a seven series is going to sound and feel more like steel than aluminum. It's going to be stiffer. It's going to have a, a higher pitch to it when you actually bottom out on a switch. Because when you actually bottom out on a switch, your caps are going to make sound, obviously, but the switch itself is going to make sound as it bottoms out. And that is going to dissipate into two, two areas. One being the plate cutout of the particular switch and two being the PCB that the switch is put into, right? As we go to a stiffer plate, that stiffer plate is going to increase the pitch a little bit, right? So uh, for the sound signature of standard aluminum, I'm just gonna call the sound signature neutral or normal so we can compare everything else to it. Obviously, please type on an aluminum plate if you haven't. All right, let's move on to brass plate. Before we do that, there's a brass plate. Okay, before we do that, disclaimer. Okay, big, big, big disclaimer. Are you guys paying attention to the disclaimer? Okay. There are so many factors at play in a keyboard, okay? With mixing of like so many materials and so many possible like build types, okay? The comparison of plate sound and feel may vary substantially in your case. So if your example, your brass is denser than somebody else's or the mounting points like of your actual board affect the sound and feel, it is not going to be an apples to apples comparison, okay? So understand that this is a basic comparison. This is a basic comparison. I am basically treating everything as a, a similar designed case with a similar designed plate made out of the materials that I personally know.
because you know not all 6000 series aluminum, uh, aluminums are the same. Not all 6061 aluminums are the same. Anyway, big disclaimer, okay? This is all very general and also comparative, all right? So if I say, oh, brass sounds deeper than aluminum and you type on your brass plate and you're like, dude, this is higher pitch. What the hell is Simon talking about? It depends, okay? This is a general thing, okay? So brass plate, also known as the normie bait. Uh, it's actually very rare to see boards come with a brass plate by default these days. But back in like 2017, 2018, it was the go-to. Why was it the go-to? Well, it was, first of all, there's nothing wrong with brass. Like brass is heftier, okay? It's a little heavier. It's gonna add some weight to your build, right? But it was pushed to less skilled builders as an easy plate to work with. And yeah, it is an easy plate to work with, right? Brass is gonna feel similar to aluminum in a lot of ways. It's still a metal. Though, you know, the more astute of you may notice a slightly softer bottom out, okay? Now, when I say softer bottom out, I don't mean when you bottom out, the plate itself is gonna flex or anything like that. I mean, the material itself is a little bit softer than aluminum. You get me? So the act of bottoming, bottoming out is going to feel a little bit less harsh than it would on aluminum, okay? You're still bottoming out. The physics are still the same. It's just, this offers a tiny bit more of a cushion than an aluminum plate would, right? So softer in this case does not mean less stiff. A, a soft plate can have a harsh bottom out and a stiff plate can have a soft bottom out. I know it's complicated, right? Overall, the brass sound signature is lower pitch compared to alloy. If it's the same thickness, okay? Due to it being a more porous mat uh, material and it's often used for various kinds of sound dampening and keyboards. So the pitch is lower and the volume generally is a little lower as well because it'll absorb some sound. It's not, it's not absorbing the sound, but for all intents and purposes, yeah, it's basically absorbing the sound. It's going to be quieter and it's going to be a little bit lower pitched. But brass is a solid go-to basically right after aluminum. All right. Next, we have a steel plate, which I don't have a sample of because I am, I am not a psychopath. So steel plate is the Korean special. Uh, I'm not a fan of steel plates. Koreans love it. And within certain builds, it can shine, okay? There is no such thing as the best plate or the worst plate. It's all very situational. Sometimes, you know, I'll pull a keyboard out and like type on it and be like, you know, this would be nice with this plate. All right, so steel is typically harsh to bottom out on, leading to a little bit more harsh of a typing experience. Steel generally will also flex a little bit more, just a tiny bit, than aluminum. So when alu flexes, it kind of, like, from a feel perspective, if you bend a thin piece of aluminum, you feel like you're deforming it. When you bend a thin piece of steel, you feel like you're springing it. You feel like it wants to go back to its original position, whereas aluminum doesn't really do that, right? However, steel will, will resonate higher frequencies more. So, and that generally leads to people hearing more ping or other high-pitched sounds that, you know, would typically get dampened by another, like, plate material. And steel does tend to work well with things like ALP switches. And sometimes it's the only financially viable option for a lot of low-cost ports. As bent steel can be, like, lasered easily for manufacturing. So, like, uh, I got the Keychron back there, and that has a steel plate. It... Sounds a little bit higher pitched than if it was an aluminum plate, but they went steel because realistically, most people aren't gonna notice. Most OEMs use steel plates. My Leopold, God rest its soul, I don't know where it is, has a steel plate. So a lot of OEMs will go steel because it's easier to work with. The differential between steel and aluminum is not huge, but the issue with steel is it will sound more pingy than another material that's kind of going to suck that ping out, okay? Yeah, I know, very scientific. All right, next, we have polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is a favorite of many flex enjoyers who cannot commit to going full plateless. So let's say, you know, you've got switches that aren't going to fit in the PCB because their, their feet are too small. So you get a 
a polycarbonate full plate. Okay, imagine this is a full plate. It means you're adding very little, like this is almost nothing being added to the equation, right? It's as close to plateless as you can possibly get realistically. So polycarbonate mixes can vary, okay? But the polycarbonate of choice for enthusiasts is a more flexi variant, so like this. Uh, some of you may have seen polycarbonate plates that are really stiff, like really stiff, like, like, like this level of stiff. I've seen them too. Those are not great polycarbonate plates in my opinion. So when I'm referencing the polycarbonate sound, I'm referencing soft polycarbonate, okay? So polycarbonate allows for a very soft bottom out feeling because like, again, this is contributing nothing. So you are feeling the switch as naturally as possible while still having a plate. So polycarbonate at a standard thickness is on par to a slightly higher pitched aluminum, okay? Aluminum is going to diffuse the bottom outside a little bit. This is going to do nothing about it. This is just going to be like, hello, I am here. I am holding the switch. So uh, interestingly enough, like many plastics, which we're going to cover after this, going with a thicker plate will lower the pitch of typing. So a very thick plastic plate is going to sound very deep sounding compared to a very thin plastic plate. And that carries across to Palm, ABS, PP, polypropylene, or PE. All right, I'm gonna group all these together because the plastic mix matters a lot when it comes to both the feel and the sound, okay? So this is the one where like, big disclaimer, where my PP is gonna feel different than your PP and your PE is gonna feel wildly different than somebody's PE and somebody's palm is gonna feel like your PP, etc. Let's just treat them as plastic plates, okay? Generally, these plastics will sound lower pitch and quieter compared to aluminum. They will be flexy, okay? They will be flexy, but not as soft as polycarbonate, okay? They'll be flexy, but not as soft, okay? Polycarbonate is pretty much the softest of the bunch. PP is a little bit stiffer than this. PE is a little bit stiffer than, uh, than, uh, than PP. Uh, Palm and ABS, kind of rare these days, but a lot stiffer than this but all of them are a little bit lower pitched and quieter compared to, the, uh, to aluminum. Uh, I'd love to say more about plastic plates, but again, the plastic matters so much. So like general plastic rules apply. The general plastic rule is it's gonna feel less harsh to bottom out than aluminum. It's gonna sound a little bit deeper. Uh, it's going to potentially be more flexy. And as you use a uh, thicker, plastic, your sound is going to sound deeper without massively affecting the harshness of your bottom out. Okay. So that is plastic. All right. Next we have carbon fiber for the champs. Now carbon fiber is, uh, is a real specialty plate material. And like I said earlier, how like there's no such thing as a bad plate material. It's about getting something that fits well together. There's very few builds where I look at it and I say, okay, this needs a, poly, uh, a, a carbon fiber plate, but they do exist, okay? So generally, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying like an aftermarket carbon fiber plate to slap in your keyboard. If the board came with a carbon fiber plate, it means the designer kind of built the board around it, you know, like the Jane 2 CE, for example, which I didn't build with the, with the carbon fiber plate because I hated it. So carbon fiber itself is like a fabric, right? but it's coated in resin, like to give it its rigidity because otherwise it would just be floppy like a t-shirt, right? So what you hear is the resin. You're not hearing the fibers of the carbon, right? It sounds kind of glassy in its sound profile, okay? It's very glassy. It makes the switches louder because it's, you know, gonna kind of reflect that sound back at you and more poppy. I, I can't believe I'm using the word poppy, but it will make your switches pop. Your switches are gonna be louder. They're gonna be more reflective, okay? Now, this applies to both woven and forged carbon fiber. There is no difference because again, what does the sound come from? The resin that it's coated in. The fiber itself does not matter. So don't get bamboozled and pay more for a particular type of carbon fiber over another for a, uh, for a keyboard plate because the defining factor is the resin, okay? That coats it. Now, the carbon fiber feel is special. 
It has a somewhat harsh bottom out, okay? Kind of like a stiff bottom out, but it allows for flex, okay? It allows for flex, kind of like, like more so than aluminum does, but it's got a, a, a kind of like crispness to a bottom out closer to steel, which is very interesting. To be fair though, uh, on the sound signature spectrum, carbon fiber already sits close to steel anyway. So like, it's not a big gasp moment. But yeah, carbon fiber is very special. And like, if you can find a build to make carbon fiber shine, oof, go for it. All right, next we've got FR4, which is now like the default, like go-to cheap plate because you can get it made at a PCB maker for very cheap. Uh, yeah. So FR4 is common for cheaper builds because it's cheaper to make 100 FR4 plates than it is to make 100 aluminum plates, for example. The sound profile is a little deeper than aluminum, okay? And it has a very unique sound to it. It won't be confused with brass or other deep sounding plates. However, I, now this is purely opinion. So far, everything has been like, like comparative analysis. I find that FR4 plates kind of like drain the life out of a keyboard. They kind of mute the overall sound of a keyboard. So if, if you don't like how your build sounds, not, not you don't like one particular sound portion of your build that you can like use different switches or different caps, but if the board altogether doesn't sound great, going to an FR4 plate kind of just like reduces all those sounds. So, yeah, like it's relatively like flexy, but the feel is stiffer than you'd expect. Like this flexes more than Alu. And to be fair, the bottom out is a little bit softer than Alu. But the thing is like, when you see it move this much, you expect that there's gonna be a lot of flex and there really isn't, not in a real build, because you've got this, plus you've got the switches in here, which are gonna prevent you from actually flexing. And then you've got a PCB under it. So although FR4 may seem super flexy, it's really not. So kind of more muted compared to aluminum. Uh, will kind of like suck the sound out of your build. That could be a good thing, that could be a bad thing, you know? And a little bit stiffer than you'd expect it based on how flexy it is, but much softer than aluminum and also cheap. So like, you know, getting, getting a few of these made costs very little. All right, uh, lastly, acrylic, uh, which I have in my nose. It just says no. So acrylic plates are gonna crack and shatter into parts after you install and type on it. I know this from experience. Uh, it shares a sound signature uh, very similar to hard polycarbonate. So we talked about soft polycarbonate and then there's hard polycarbonate. Hard is the bad one, okay? But uh, yeah, 1.5 millimeter acrylic plates are a big no-no, but if you're gonna buy a acrylic stacked case and uh, there's an acrylic plate section in there that's like two or more millimeters, that's fine because it's not gonna crack and fall apart. If you're over two millimeters on your acrylic, it's gonna sound good. And it's gonna follow the rule of plastics where thicker plastic is deeper sounding. So a three millimeter acrylic plate is gonna sound deeper than a 1.5 millimeter, just as a five millimeter acrylic plate is gonna sound deeper than the three millimeter. In terms of softness, it's gonna feel a lot like other plastics. I don't know why it has its own category here. Generally, because I wouldn't recommend people get an acrylic plate unless it's very thick. All right, so that's it. That's it about materials. Let's, let's talk about plate cuts, okay? Does this have cuts? No. Does this have cuts? No. Based. This, okay, this has a cut, okay? There's a cut right here on the tab. Cool. So what are plate, and also there's, there's cuts here. Got them blind, okay. So what are plate cuts? Why do we have big cuts in our plate? Well, they allow for more flex, depending on how wild the cuts are. So a plate like this, that has large cutouts between the F row and the alpha cluster allows the plate to, to bend in this direction, to flex like that, like that, like that. So the more wild your cuts are, the more flex you can get out of it. For example, this is a brass plate. Brass plate should not flex. This is really bad for the brass, don't do this by the way. But introducing so many cuts allows you to really, 
really bend the plate, okay? Generally, it's not really needed, but you can do it, okay? So generally, they raise the pitch of the plate, okay? So the more cuts you have around a particular portion, the higher pitch that area is going to be. But why is that, Simon? Well, that's because you have less material to conduct sound, to conduct vibrations away from your switch. As you have less material, the pitch is going to be higher. It's like hitting a small bell versus a big bell. One's going to go ding, the other one's going to go dong. So having a lot of plate cuts means that every time you bottom out your switches, you've got little dings propagating through the plate instead of dongs. Uh, fun fact, uh, the same rule applies to plates. So, you know, thinner material is going to be higher pitch than thicker material pretty much for anything. So there you go. Uh, all right. And uh, last, we'll talk about uh, thickness and then we'll finish up the video. So it's fairly simple. A thicker plate is going to feel more stiff, more harsh because you've got more material piled on, right? So, you know, the kinetic feeling of you bottoming out your switch is going to have a lot more material on the bottom end trying to catch that versus, you know, something like a very flexy 1.5 millimeter plate where there's nothing. There's, there's nothing. So like it goes where it should go. There's nothing fighting back. The more material you add, the more it's fighting back. It's like punching cardboard box versus punching a brick wall, right? Uh, however, a thicker plate will most often sound deeper, okay? There are exceptions. Uh, thicker plastic is pretty much always deeper, while brass and aluminum may sometimes feel like more muted, more quiet, and therefore harder to grasp the sound of. But generally, thicker plate means more uh, blah, 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 blah. thicker plate means more harsh, and thicker plate means more quiet and also lower pitch. All right, so that's that's all the plates. Uh, thank you for watching my plate video. Uh, if if you have uh, any suggestions for future videos, please let me know. Uh, this video was done because of my patrons that not only suggested the idea, but helped me actually get the thoughts down on paper. And if you actually really like my content and want to support the channel, you can join the Patreon and actually have input on the videos. I know it's like you have the opportunity to have more work, but if that's what you want, I'd, I'd love it. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching my video. Hopefully we'll make more videos like this. If people like this, thanks. Press the thumb and get into Discord.